For 60 years, nothing else did what a Polaroid picture did. Nobody else made a picture that appeared in your hands 60 seconds after the photo was shot, and now it's almost gone. Nearly every story about Polaroid goes back to its founder, a man named Edwin Land. He was the house genius. He was the inventor of instant photography. He ran Polaroid in almost like a scientific think tank that every now and then would kick out a product that made an absolute fortune. Land did no market research. He once said, marketing is what you do if your product is no good. Instead, what he believed was this. You had to show people something they had no idea they wanted, but that was irresistible. To that end, what he would do was turn Polaroid's annual meeting into a sort of a show. He would get up on stage, he would show the new camera, he'd demonstrate whatever the new product was, and by the end of the meeting, you completely had to have one. You were drawn into Polaroid land. This may remind you of somebody. Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple, was watching very closely as a young man. He once explicitly said he modeled Apple on Polaroid. And in fact, a few times in the 1970s and early 80s, he made a trip to Polaroid's headquarters to meet Dr. Land. In 1970, Land shot a short film for his employees in which he talked about the future of photography. And what he describes is astonishing. It's a future from then that sounds very much like our present. A camera that would be, oh, like the telephone, something that you use all day long, whenever an occasion arises in which you want to make sure that you cannot trust your memory, but a camera that you would use as often as your pencil or your eyeglasses. You'd have photographs from your entire life taken constantly and from your children's life and your families and your friends, you sort of make an ongoing record of your world. It anticipates to an astonishing extent the way we all shoot photos every day on our iPhones and upload them to Facebook. Being able to take a wallet out of my pocket and perhaps open the wallet, press a button, close the wallet, and have the picture. When Land started talking about this stuff, it was pretty nearly science fiction. Real life was not quite so futuristic. The first Land camera in 1948 weighed more than four pounds. Smaller and lighter cameras like the Swinger came in the 1960s, and that one was aimed at teenagers. Hey, meet the Swinger, Polaroid Swinger. Meet the Swinger, Polaroid Swinger. A lot of fine artists embraced Polaroid as well, from Ansel Adams, who actually worked for the company as a consultant, to Andy Warhol. Polaroid even built a few giant cameras that made pictures 20 by 24 inches to show off the technology, and the large format cameras are still in use today. The real blockbuster, though, came in 1972. That was the SX-70 line. That's the one we all think of as the classic Polaroid picture with the white border that spits out the front of the camera. Land left Polaroid in 1982. The people who ran Polaroid after him did some things right and some things not so right. What happened was the great innovation machine in that company started to cool down. Then digital came along and changed everything. Since 2001, Polaroid has declared bankruptcy twice and been sold three times. And one of those three owners, one of the interim owners, uh, went to jail for fraud. The newest owners are trying to make a go of it again, but the film is gone film production ended in 2008. Yet people refuse to let this weird old technology die. In 2009, three entrepreneurs bought Polaroid's last film factory, reincorporated as a company called The Impossible Project. Their product is still a little experimental, but everybody in Polaroid land is rooting for them, which brings us to another credo of Dr. Land. Don't do anything anyone else can do.